guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to actually be taking you through a full day of eating for me while I'm in a cut, or in other words, trying to lose fat while either building or at the very least maintaining the muscle mass that I have. So for a little bit of context for myself and my diet, I find that on average, I burn about 2,700 calories a day, meaning that if I eat 2,700 calories a day, my weight's not going to change. So if I'm trying to cut fat, I have to reduce my calories from there. Now in general for people, if you're trying to lose body fat, you want to reduce calories from somewhere between 10 to 25% of your maintenance calories. Now, the larger you cut the calories, the harder it's going to be to build or even retain muscle while in that calorie deficit. So if you're already really lean, you want to keep that amount that you reduce your calories down near that like 10% range. But if you have more body fat to lose and maybe a little bit less muscle mass, then you can increase that calorie reduction up closer to the 20 to 25% range. So to jump right into what I eat in a day, I start off pretty much every morning with French toast. Now, I know that most people don't exactly think of this as a low calorie food, but I think that it's a good example that you can almost always find low calorie ways to cook the foods that you enjoy eating, and that you don't have to be stuck eating chicken and rice every day if you want to get shredded or even just lose a little bit of weight. This French toast is made similarly to regular French toast, but instead of using whole eggs, I just weigh out about 5 servings of cartoned egg whites. There's nothing wrong with whole eggs, of course, they're just more calorically dense, but can be added if you want the extra healthy fats and vitamins. I also want to add that when calorie counting, weighing out your food will always be significantly more accurate than going off of whatever the volume measurement for that food is, such as one cup or one tablespoon of something, and if you do use a food scale and weigh out everything that you eat, you'll probably get more accurate results and faster results than if you were to just use that volume measurement. From there, I just whisk in a little bit of cinnamon, which is only about 6 calories per gram, so practically speaking, you probably don't even need to add it to your calories, but I personally like to just to be as accurate as possible. And when cooking the french toast or anything that may stick to a pan, make sure to use a zero calorie cooking spray over things like butter or oil because it's easy to forget to add those calories from those things and can really screw up your calorie tracking. Once done cooking, I use a sugar free maple syrup that's only 5 calories per serving, toss on some blueberries for taste, and then drink a glass of grape juice with breakfast. Now generally for fat loss diets, fruit juices aren't the best option because they're kind of high calorie because of all the sugar and they're not really filling in any way. Um, the diet I eat is actually really filling for me so I add the grape juice just because I like it but for someone else that could be eating the exact same diet it might not be filling enough for them so the grape juice is something that they could cut out so they could distribute those calories to more actual food. The total calories and macros for this meal are listed here, and we'll make sure to total it all up at the end of the video. Next up in my day is a mid-morning snack before lunch. It's a pretty simple Greek yogurt parfait. Now I do like to get a little bit more protein than just traditional Greek yogurt, so I take half a serving of vanilla protein powder and mix it into the yogurt. From there, I add just half a serving of plain oats some more blueberries, and then finally sprinkle on just a little bit more cinnamon for added taste. This is one of my favorite snacks and one that I recommend to almost any client that asks me about food because it's very filling for a snack, delicious, and low calorie for the amount of food that you get. Next up we're going to look at what I eat for lunch, which is not only easily the highest calorie meal of the day for me, but also just a couple hours before I go work out. So you'll notice that the uh, carbs are pretty high in order to maximize muscle glycogen levels before a workout. And then uh, it's also pretty high in protein, which will help prepare my body for that enhanced muscle protein synthesis for after the workout. So for lunch, I go with barbecue roast beef wraps with pepper jack cheese and some spinach along with a diet root beer. The calories on these can vary quite a bit depending on the brand of tortillas and the roast beef that you use, so you can probably find lower or higher calorie ways to make this exact same meal if you wanted to. The calories and macros are listed here, and you'll notice the levels of protein and carbohydrates as I prepare for the upcoming workout. Now even though I get plenty of carbohydrate in my pre-workout meal, and I know that 
weight training doesn't actually reduce muscle glycogen by that much. So the intra workout nutrition isn't quite as important. Um, I will still drink a Gatorade during my workout if I know that it's going to be going on for a while. But if you're someone that cuts their calories lower than I am here, then uh, that along with the grape juice are two easy things you can cut out to make sure you can get more food in your diet for the calories. But we still want to add it to the total for the day. So the calories for my intra workout nutrition are here. Now, right after the gym is when I get the most protein in my diet, but I don't actually think it's that important that you get a ton of protein right after you work out, just that you get some protein. If you watched my most recent video on protein, you'll know that as long as you're hitting your daily protein goal and you're spreading it out over four to five meals a day, that's what's most important for maximizing muscle growth. But for dinner, we'll usually mix it up quite a bit, but one of the most common ones that we do are tacos with low carb tortillas, fat-free cheese, and lean ground turkey. These are delicious, high in protein, and fairly low in calorie overall. I also drink another diet soda with dinner since it's zero calorie and is something a little sweeter that helps me not want to eat the worst foods later on as it gets later at night. And then I usually get a little bit hungrier right before bed, so I finish up the day with a bagel with cream cheese, which isn't for any reason other than that I just like them, so we'll go ahead and add that to the total. So in the end, the final total for the day comes out to this right here. The calories and macros don't add up perfectly because of the fiber included in the carbohydrates, which are either going to be zero or two calories per gram, depending on the type of fiber, not four calories per gram like most carbs. So if we assume a maintenance calorie level of about 2,700 calories a day, that's a reduction of about 13.5% from maintenance, which is pretty small, but it's enough that I should be slowly losing fat and hopefully still be able to build muscle over time. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about my diet, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll answer them as soon as I can. If not, please click that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I will see you next time.